Okay, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to our December product update featuring the launch of Distributed Tracing. My name is Chris Walski. I lead product marketing at Solace, and I'm joined today by Sean McAllister, who is our chief product and technology officer, and by Chris Alt, who is one of our principal product managers. And we're going to be covering a lot of ground today, uh, but we will start with the big news around distributed tracing. And this may be something you already know a lot about, or uh, it may be something that you're completely new to. But the good news is you're in the right place either way, because Sean and Chris are going to today tell you everything you need to know to get this important capability working for you, as it is now generally available to Solace customers. Sean's also going to provide updates on Event Portal 2.0, on open source plugins for popular development tools, uh, on Kafka Mesh and an integrated Kafka bridge, uh, and more. And of course, we're going to leave plenty of time at the end to cover any questions you have um, based on the information you see today. So please do type those questions in and send them to us um, as they pop up for you, and we will take them up at the end of the presentation. Okay, let's jump in. And it's always nice to start a presentation with some challenges, right? So, so here's one that may be familiar to you. So Judy on the left here works for a large global retailer. She's in IT and she supports operations and order fulfillment for the US Northeast. So one day Judy gets a call from a manager at one of her major fulfillment centers who says that he's seeing a fraction of the orders he normally sees for this time in the day. Something must be up. So Judy digs into her system and she finds that in fact the online orders seem to be high as usual, but the problem seems to be that not all of these orders are making their way to the order fulfillment centers. So what does Judy do? She calls Jack, her middleware ops guy, and she explains the problem. And Jack thinks about the problem and he tells Judy, okay, I'm gonna to need to look at the data path through our event brokers to see what's wrong. Okay, so go look at the data path, says Judy. We have to fix this as soon as possible. We're losing money, we're missing orders. Um, and unfortunately, Jack has to say that's not easy. You know, like, look, this is gonna take time. And I, I can't even tell you really how long. So another day, hopefully not the next day, Jack gets a call from Alex and Legal. And Alex, need, Alex needs to prove um, that specific customer information is not leaving the country, a uh, challenge that you know, many, if not all, large enterprises face today. So he says, you can help me with that, right, Jack? I need to document this. Um, and unfortunately, Jack, again, has to say, listen, I can't easily tell you what application sent and received this information. I'll have to get back to you. So what Jack can do in these situations um, as you may know, is he can recheck the broker configuration uh, to see that everything's set up right. But that's going to take a lot of time. And in this case in particular, even after all that work, he's not going to be able to show Alex anything. He won't have the proof that Alex is looking for. The, beta, the data path is basically dark to Jack. So poor Jack, he's getting all these calls and questions about how data is moving through the enterprise, and he's got no easy answers. Data and events are getting published and consumed or not uh, via different event brokers, but Jack has no way to trace the path of data between the brokers and applications, which can be critical to troubleshoot challenges like the ones uh, Judy and Alex are dealing with. And this reality is not just stressing uh, Jack out, it could also be costing his company you know, time and money. But uh, Jack's finally in luck because uh, as you may have guessed, he's a Solace customer, and now there is a solution to this problem, right, Sean? That's right, Chris. You know, Jack's a lucky guy because uh, as a Solace user, he can solve all these problems and so many more with PubSub Plus distributed tracing. This is a newly released feature which gives Jack uh, all the observability over his entire event mesh. So now Jack can see all kinds of things happening in his event mesh. He can see when events are published, into the broker, when they're in queued to a consumer application, when they're delivered to the consumer, when they're acknowledged or they're rejected, he can see all of this across his entire event mesh and across his entire application stack. And so now he can help Alex in legal and Judy in order management, and I'll describe that. And he makes him a happy camper because he can satisfy the needs of his internal clients and make his operations run much smoother because he has distributed tracing. Now, if I step back and I look at observability in general, it really has three components that we typically talk about, logs, metrics, and traces. And this is becoming a very big deal for CIOs and for architects, especially in this day of distributed applications. And in fact, 
Gartner agrees, and so they predict that by 2025, 70% of all new cloud native applications are going to adopt open telemetry for observability. So that shows you the importance of observability and of open telemetry as the de facto standard for dealing with that. Now, the PubSub Plus platform has had uh, metrics and logs from our clients and our brokers for some time now. And we're adding distributed tracing as we're talking about, obviously. And tracing is becoming so important in this age of distributed applications, because when you had a big monolithic applications, logs were probably enough because you could see which functions and methods call another, and you could see the entire execution path and determine what went wrong in the processing. But now with distributed applications, both in your own data center and perhaps in multiple data centers, logging is not enough anymore. You need distributed tracing to pull it all together and to give you one view of the behavior of your distributed application. So let's look at how this works in a Solace context. In the middle there, you see a PubSub Plus broker that is going to emit telemetry events into an internal queue that's persistent so none of these events are lost. And then those events are sent to an external software component, which is an open telemetry collector, and it uses the Solace receiver plugin that we have also open sourced and is part of the open telemetry repository in CNCF, so you can find it there. And our client libraries also will emit events, open telemetry events into the collector. And so now when you, an event passes through your system, you can see it hopping through there in my nice animation. Um, events are generated by the publisher API to say it's about to be transmitted. It's generated by the broker when it's received, when it's enqueued, when it's transmitted to a consumer, when it's act. And you can see all of that going into the open telemetry collector itself. And that information then is then delivered to your favorite observability tool, whether it's Datadog, Jaeger, Dynatrace. Um, you can see this all in one place. It's not a Solace tool. Most of our clients want this in a separate observability tool because they want to be able to also integrate their own application telemetry events. And that allows them to see events happening in the publisher app, in our client libraries, throughout the event mesh, in the destination application, and in fact, hopping through multiple applications in a distributed environment. And if I zoom in on the components here, again, we talked about the broker and the open telemetry collector. If you're a self-managed software user or an appliance user, then you acquire the updated version of the software, which is 10.2.1, and you install that in your broker. You acquire the open telemetry collector, you deploy that, do some configuration, boom, you're up and running. And that's great, it's pretty easy. But if you're a Solace Cloud user, it's even easier because the brokers are updated by PubSub Plus Cloud and the open telemetry collector is deployed and upgraded and managed all as part of PubSub Plus Cloud. So all you need to do is some configuration and you're up and running. So now why do organizations like and benefit from distributed tracing? And I would say there's four key reasons in my mind. So first of all, for debugging pre-production, right? So you go into your system test and you inject some events and these distributed microsystems all interact, or are you doing event-driven integration? And during that period is when, you know, you, is when you're working out your defects. And so that's where it's important to be able to see what went wrong in the interaction of these applications. And, um, and to see whether the interaction is what you expect. And you wanna do that very quickly and succinctly so that you can efficiently get applications into production, reduce the test and development time, and therefore make you more agile as a company, which is a key business objective we find for many of our clients. Then when you get into production and you know Judy calls you up and goes, hey, the orders aren't flowing where they should, you need an unobtrusive way to be able to get in and see what is actually happening. So this is where Jack, for example, can go in and see whether the events are being published into the event mesh or not, whether they're getting through the event mesh, whether they're getting into the queue for the order management system or not. And it allows you to zero in on where the problem is, a software problem or a configuration problem. And it stops all of the finger pointing about where the problem might be because it tells you with data where the problem actually is. And that reduces your mean time to repair. It gives you a better user experience of your overall system. 
From a monitoring and an optimization point of view, now you have data that tells you things like how long it takes events to get through your event mesh, how long events spend in a queue, and if they spend too long there, maybe you need more consumer apps to deal with the load. And because you can see when an event is transmitted to an application and acknowledged from the application, it gives you the processing time of that app, which might be too long, even though there's no queuing. So if you have a data pipeline or you have some microservice that has you know, five hops and the end-to-end -end time is too long, this really helps you pinpoint where along that chain you need to optimize. And then finally, from a data lineage point of view, you know, Alex saying, hey, where is my data going? I need to be able to demonstrate that it's going only where it's allowed to go. This is what Distributed Trace will help you do, is to know which applications are consuming it, who is producing it, and to make sure that the information that you are consuming comes from you know, the golden source as opposed to a derived source, for example. All these things possible with distributed tracing that are otherwise, frankly, not possible. Now, if I talk about the rollout of distributed tracing, we're now in December and the broker release 10.2.1 has been released and it's GA and it supports what we call receive spans. So this is the broker receiving events and logging and issuing telemetry for that. And then also telling you where it's been in queued, either to a bridge queue to another broker or to a consuming application. That's all GA right now. And you can have end-to-end -end tracing with our JMS and JCSMP APIs because we'll pass the trace ID all the way through between all of your applications. That's available in GA in the software and the appliance today and will be GA in the cloud in February. Between now and then, we have an EA access within Solace Cloud. Then beyond that, starting in March with our next releases, we'll be adding more capabilities, specifically what we call send spans or what the industry calls send spans. That means the broker sending to applications and then ACS and NACS coming back and all of that being logged as well. And then we'll be adding support for more and more APIs that will support the end-to-end -end flow of transaction of trace IDs so that you can have a full end-to-end -end picture of your tracing. And that's the way we're going to roll it out over time. So it's ready for you to use today. Now, as you may expect, you know, we've talked a lot about distributed tracing. I'm sure you're excited to see what that looks like. So I'd like to invite Chris Alt, our principal product manager in PubSub Plus Cloud to come up and give you a quick demo. Over to you, Chris. Great, thanks very much, Sean. Now let's shift focus back to Jack and the problems that he needs to solve. For Judy, troubleshooting lost orders. For Alex, proving that customer data is not leaving a region of informational control. We're gonna review the distributed tracing configuration across Jack's estate, and we're gonna use open telemetry traces to solve these problems. Jack's application scope is big. He's managing a Solace event mesh spanning Canada, United States, and Asia Pacific. He's got multiple order intake applications receiving orders, He's got multiple order processing applications handling inventory, payment processing, and shipping logistics. Jack's not new to open telemetry. His apps already send traces, but until recently, he's been unable to view the traces once the messages enter the event mesh. It's a black box. This is the real view of Jack's event mesh in the PubSub Plus console. As I said, there's, a, there's an e-commerce broker in Japan, there's an e-commerce broker in Montreal, and an order processing broker in, in the United States, handling all backend global order processing applications. All applications are publishing and subscribing events across this global mesh. He uses an event mesh to leverage dynamic message writing across the globe. This way, all brokers exchange all topic subscriptions amongst themselves, and all events are routed to clients regardless of clients' physical locations, ensuring guaranteed delivery of events. However, messages may not necessarily be contained strictly within geolocations. Open telemetry traces provide for that visibility. Let me show you how distributed tracing can solve for Jack's problems. Let's review the configuration that he laid down and what he would have configured. We're gonna go over to the cluster manager. These are the three servers, the three brokers that I showed you on the previous page. You can see that they're all connected to the Acme retail mesh. 
I'll go into the configuration for order management. All of them are the same. And you can see here that the broker's software version is based in supporting the distributed tracing software. That's a good thing. Let's go into the details, the conf configuration for the broker. And what you'll see is we have a new configuration tile called distributed tracing. It's enabled. That's great. Well, let's go and take a look at the configuration on the broker. What events are being passed through open telemetry traces? We go into the broker, we select telemetry on the side panel, and we see that telemetry has been, uh, a telemetry profile has been created, tracing's been enabled, the receiver's been enabled, but still, what events are being sent out through open, as open telemetry traces? We go to trace filters. We see that there is a trace filter created, and that's the object that holds the topic subscriptions for forwarding through open telemetry. Let's go into that trace filter specifically. It's been enabled, that's good. What are the topic subscriptions? This one has the greater than symbol, the multi-level wildcard. Okay, this broker has been configured with tracing enabled and every single event that the broker receives gets forwarded through uh, open, as open telemetry traces to the backend processing system. Where does it go? Well, let's go back to account details, take a look at the distributed tracing configuration at the account details level, and we see it's configured for Datadog. That's pretty handy. And the details that are needed for setting this up are really simple. Select a Datadog, provide an API key. Now, there are two key points here that need to be brought forward. This configuration for the backend APM tool is consistent across all broker services. This is an org and account level setting. That ensures that all open telemetry traces coming from all brokers go to the same single backend. The other really important thing to know is through the configuration steps of configuring data uh, distributed tracing, our software creates the open telemetry collectors takes this configuration, passes it on to the collectors themselves, and we spin up the, the collectors. We apply monitoring the, to the collectors. We ensure the configuration is consistent across all of the collectors. We take that burden off of you. We manage the full life cycle of the open telemetry collectors like Sean mentioned earlier. Let's go like take a look at some of those traces. All right, so I'm in the data dog. Uh, account. I'm looking at a bunch of traces. Earlier, I talked about order intake. I talked about order intake and order processing. If we select one of these traces, well, we get to see the order intake application that Jack's team is already instrumented with open telemetry traces. And we see the order intake process, receiving orders from customers. We see at the far end, we've got order processing, executing on those orders, and we've got a bunch of new information that is only just recently showing up. We've got this server, this server, and this server. This is the event mesh that I showed you earlier. This is Jack's event mesh. This is the e-commerce broker in Canada. The order intake application posted a message, published an event to the e-commerce broker in Canada. The message got passed through the event mesh and picked up and then, for, and then published over to the order processing application from the order management broker in the United States. I've got full visibility of my, my event mesh. I can see specifically where data is going and how it's flowing. I now have explicit visibility of the path that the events take across the event mesh and can see specifically which broker is involved in passing these messages. I can now prove that customer information taken in from order intake does not enter regions that it's not supposed to enter. I can now prove data lineage for Alex solving his compliance challenges. Let me walk you through Judy's lost order problem. Now remember, Jack's application is based on order intakes with payment information and order processing at the back end that does takes care of the payments and the shipping. The two of them need to work in conjunction. If I'm trying to find a lost order, well, how about I search on one of these two, iterate through a much smaller list to see if one of them is missing. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna search on the order intake 
And now my set of traces is much smaller. And I'm going to select on each one of these to see if the full trace, uh, if the spans include the order processing. This includes the order processing at the back end, as well as visibility to the entire mesh. Let's go through another one. This one also includes the full front end, back end processing. What about this one? Here we see we've got the application generating the open telemetry trace that has ingested some information. We've got the broker mesh dropping their traces, but I'm missing that back end processing. I just found a dropped order. Now, it's important to know that all consumer queues on which the message is enqueued are listed in the traces here. I can examine this queue and see which apps have registered for and received this message. In other words, if the correct queue is not listed here in this trace, the receiver will not receive the message. And that's exactly the problem we're trying to solve. This can only be explained by the topic of the message not matching the queue subscription. By adjusting the topic subscription, problem solved. It was a configuration issue found simply through open telemetry traces and reviewing broker configuration, quickly found and quickly resolved. Jack's been able to easily configure distributed tracing across his event mesh, verify the configuration from a single pane of glass, he can easily add or remove events for tracing. He can easily deploy collectors and manage their configuration. But the big thing is he can easily prove that customer information is not leaving regions of concern. He can prove data lineage for Alex. He easily identifies which orders are being lost and has been able to fix the configuration to resolve this behavior. Simple and awesome. Back over to you, Sean. Thanks, Chris. That was a great demo. And I'm sure Jack is now very happy that he has distributed tracing so that he can answer all the questions that he's receiving and provide a better service overall to his user base. And now you can try it too. So distributed tracing is available now. If you're a self-managed software or an appliance user, you can download release 10.2.1 which has distributed tracing in it and go to our docs. It'll tell you, show you a, a code lab that will allow you to get up and running so very quickly to experience it. And if you're a PubSubhost Cloud user, then contact your Solace sales rep or your customer support manager because it's still EA in Solace Cloud until February, at which point it'll be completely self-service. And now while distributed tracing is a paid for feature, you can try it out for free in a complete, completely frictionless way using our demo mode um, as soon as you bring up your broker. And if you like it, you use it, then you could subscribe to the service to be able to put it into production. Now I'm gonna move on to Event Portal because there's a lot of exciting things happening there. Now in October, what we released is lifecycle management as part of Event Portal 2.0. And lifecycle management has embodies a whole bunch of capabilities that you provided us feedback on, such as support for multiple environments. So now you can have dev, QA, pre-prod, and prod environments defined in Event Portal. The event Portal also supports versions of different artifacts. So you can have different versions of events in each of these environments and have an overall catalog that allows you to search across them and determine which version of which event is where, um, and so that you can manage overall the information as it's evolving in your environment. And we've also provided lots of role-based access control improvements as well, so that you can proper govern access to your information at an enterprise level. And Event Portal now is very, very useful for EDA users or people who are new to EDA, developing new microservices, developing new event-driven integrations, where you can start on the right foot by properly documenting your event flows, annotating them, sharing them in the right way, making them visible so that they can be reused because that's where you get the most value out of EDA from an agility point of view. Now, having a tool like Event Portal is great, but we also know that users want to integrate this with other tools that they have as part of their software development lifecycle. And so we've been busy working on that too. 
And we've created a bunch of open source plugins for a variety of tools to integrate Event Portal into your environment. So things like Slack for collaboration, Git for GitOps, if you're a GitOps uh, company, uh, Ansible for CI CD, we have an async API importer, we have a Confluence plugin that's coming soon. And all this is to make Event Portal an integrated part of your development tool chain. And we have this great blog by Jesse Menning that will give you all the details that you need. So I highly encourage you to take a look at that. He describes each of the tools. There's a video demonstration of each of the tools and then a link to our Solace Labs Git repo where you can take a look at the integration and use it as inspiration for how to integrate Event Portal with your development uh, tooling as well. Now we all learn by examples, right? You want to kind of, you know, see an example of something to get started and 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 to create, you know, to drive some creative juices. And what we've added to Event Portal now is these types of samples. And those are available directly from the Event Portal application. So we've built application samples like in the retail space, natural resources, and aviation and we'll be adding more over time. And this way, whenever you go into Event Portal, you know, as you can see right here in the getting started box, there's a link to all of our great samples. If some people X that out and it goes away, not to worry, it's available down here as well in the question mark. And so you can go there and you can browse the samples that we have and you can import those into your own Event Portal account. And that allows you to see examples of things like topics created with Solace best practices in mind. It allows you to see how you would share or model events shared between application domains or how certain features in event portal are used. You can see tangible examples of that. And we hope you find those useful to kind of get going and you know, to learn how to best make use of the tool. Now, so what's next with event portal? And lots of exciting things here. In Q1, what we'll be doing is delivering discovery and audit for Solace and Kafka. And what that allows you to do now is to tie your runtime into the event portal by using an event management agent that you'll deploy close to your, your event broker, Solace or Kafka. And that event management agent will then discover configuration in those brokers. So for Solace, it'll discover queues and queue configs, subscriptions, topics. For Kafka, it will discover the topics and the topic config, consumer groups, and schemas from your schema registry if you have one. Import that all into Event Portal so you can see what's actually running in your or in your runtime. And sometimes we find clients are quite surprised actually about what's actually there versus what they think is there. And as you evolve your event flows over time and you add more to the Event Portal to uh, document what you're doing, the audit capability will then allow you to compare what's in Event Portal as your design intent versus what is in your runtime. It'll flag discrepancies and allow you to resolve these discrepancies so that you always know that what's in Event Portal reflects what is in your runtime. What we'll also be doing later in the kind of first half of 23 is releasing an integration to support API management portals and self-service developer portals. We have a partnership that we've announced with Gravity who provide an API management platform and we'll be announcing other partners also as part of this program. But what this will allow you to do in Gravity and in those partners is to have a single developer portal where you can see your RESTful APIs and your event APIs, if you will, all in one place to uh, request access, be granted access to them all uniformly, whether they're REST or events. And then to have in the Solace case, you know, queues provision with subscriptions and ACLs and everything so that you can have a completely self-serve access to this data and all through a common developer portal. And we have clients who want to develop their own, create their own developer portal using things like Backstage as open source or from scratch. And this capability will allow you to do that and tie event portal into uh, your developer's experience. And then further out in time, we'll be adding analytics to the event portal. So you'll be able to see things like, you know, um, how many, which events are being reused the most, have the most subscribers, which have the fewest subscribers, because that's what you want is to encourage reuse, right? So you can manage that and get statistics on that. 
And then we'll also be integrating runtime metrics from your brokers to be able to see how many events per day, per hour, to trend these and chart and graph them, et cetera. So you have one place to fully understand what is happening within your EDA. So you should really think of Event Portal as the platform that you use to manage all of this information, which has designer catalog today to be able to you know, design and find the events and the schemas that you need, runtime manager that manages your different environments. It has a great UI and also it's an API first platform. So it integrates well with your development tools. It is will now be tied and be in sync with your runtime for Solace and for Kafka and more brokers coming in the future. It will integrate with uh, API management systems and give you the ability to have a single place for REST and event APIs together. And then over time also contain the analytics for all of the thing, all of the events flowing in your runtime. So we're quite excited. This is quite an ambitious vision that we have and uh, this is rolling out very quickly now. So stay tuned, this is very exciting. Now I'm gonna move on to other capabilities that you might be interested in. I'm gonna start with connectors because from what I can tell, everybody's interested in connectors. We have had connectors, as you know, for some time now, some of them integrated in the broker where we can push events into an S3 bucket or trigger a Google run or a Lambda function. We have Kafka connectors, Beam, Spark connectors, and all of those you can see on our connector hub at the URL that's right there. But as I've talked about before, we have a new class of connectors coming out, these framework connectors that are built on Spring Cloud Stream. And I'm happy to announce that our first one is now GA. The IBM MQ connector, which has been very popular with our clients, is now available in GA. And TIBCO EMS and a general JMS connector will also be coming very soon in calendar 23, with many more to follow after that, as you can see uh, on the left, right, FTP, file connectors, CDC connectors, all coming. And these connectors, they run as standalone applications, as standalone Java apps, and you can run them via Docker or not, deploy them in Kubernetes. And this framework provides a common experience for these broker, for these connectors where they'll be HA capable in the same way. They um, have built-in metrics. You can point a browser at them and drill into logs and statistics. And they integrate with a variety of monitoring tools so you can have centralized monitoring of all these connectors. And they're open source. So you can go to Solace Labs and Solace Products and find these connectors and deploy them and use them, and then optionally pay for support when you go to production. And so from a management point of view, you know, today, as you deploy these various connectors and you feed them YAML configuration files that could either be in a Git repo or in a local file system, you can have centralized monitoring and logging of for these connectors because they all integrate with your favorite monitoring tools that you see there. Um, but you know, we know that users want centralized configuration management and they want operation management all from a single dashboard. And so I'm happy to say that by mid-year next year, we're going to be releasing a connector management server. And that connector management server will then provide the one-stop shop, the single pane of glass, so you can see all of your deployed connectors, you can see the workflows within those connectors, the status of the workflows, you can drill in from this one place and see statistics and logs and start them and stop them. Um, and so this will be provide you this great one-stop shop for all of your connector management. And then over time, what we'll do is the connector management server will give you a, you know, a GUI-based UI to configure your next connector so that all the configuration management uh, doesn't require you to, you know, be to work with YAML if you choose to. So we're quite excited about this. And in our next product update, um, I'm going to have the team give you a demo of our connector management server. So stay tuned for that. Let's move on now to Kafka. Now, Kafka is a very popular uh, you know, um, broker that people use for things like analytics, for example. But it, it does come with a variety of challenges. You know, one of them being hybrid cloud deployment. So if you have a Kafka broker on-prem and you have one in the cloud, how do you connect them together to share events there? How do you filter while preserving order? So as you know, if you want to maintain order among events in a Kafka context, they all need to go in the same topic. But if they go in the same topic, then the broker can't filter out just the ones that you want. So that's a challenge. 
you know, how do you connect other non-Kafka brokers into your environment? How do you replicate data between, let's say, an Apache cluster and an MSK cluster? Because not everybody uses the same Kafka technology or the same deployment um, everywhere in their enterprise. How do you connect your edge IoT things into your Kafka environment? So these are just some of the challenges that I know our clients face. And there are bespoke solutions for each of these problems that you can see here, right? So you can go down the path of solving each one in its own special way. But wouldn't it be nice if you had one uniform way of solving these problems? So you deploy one architecture and you can deal with all these problems in the same way. And it turns out you can. And that's what Kafka Mesh is all about. And Kafka Mesh is basically a Solace event mesh that you can deploy, which can be in a hybrid multi-cloud context if you like. And it connects into one or more Kafka clusters, which could be of different, you know, provided by different vendors. And it provides solutions to many of the problems that we just explained on the previous slide. And I'll give you an example. So let's say here I have an order management system and I have events coming in for these orders and they now have to be in the same topic in Kafka, right? They have to be, let's say here in this global order, global dot orders topic. And I need that to maintain the sequence in which they occur. And so what I do with Solace is I deploy my event mesh and then I construct a smart topic structure that has, in this case, you know, the geography, the store name, and the item in the topic. And so as events are pulled from the Kafka cluster, I can then annotate them with smart topics that you can see here, inject them into the Kafka mesh. And now if I have an application, let's say, that just wants uh, orders that originate in the US, you can create a subscription in Solace that only gives you or that gives you exactly all of the US originated orders and uh, only those using a US slash greater than subscription. If I want to receive all of the events from a particular store, I can wildcard the geography and the item type. And of course, if I want you know, just pencils, no matter where they come from, then I can wildcard the geo and the store and just ask for pencils. And now in this case, applications consume this kind of filtered feeds, but while maintaining order. So that's one problem. I can distribute in a hybrid multi-cloud environment. That's a solution to a second problem. And of course, I can connect different types of Kafka clusters, which is a third problem that I solve all from this one architecture. And many more, I just don't have time to go through these all now. And so, as you know, we have um, a Kafka connector that runs in a Kafka Connect environment that we've had for some time now. And I've talked before about the fact that we're going to integrate that connector into the PubSub Plus event broker. And that gives you then a much simpler deployment, fewer moving pieces, more robust, less operational headaches, uh, higher performance. And I would like to announce that uh, right in the new year, we will be starting our early access program. So if you are interested in experimenting with this, you want to try out and see what you can do from a Kafka Mesh point of view, please contact us and we'll see if we can get you into our early access program. We'd love to have you on board. Now, the last thing I'm going to talk about is Solace's answer to Kafka consumer groups, and that's called partitioned queues. So let me set this up for you. You have an, an online e-commerce platform that takes in orders. And as part of your you know, processing of that order, you end up in this publisher application that you know, takes the order and validates it. But now you have a bunch of backend processing to do that can be asynchronous, right? So the publisher is publishing these events into the consumer app that you see here and all is working well, life is good. And then you are become wildly successful, which is a great problem to have. Your orders start to increase you're getting more and more traffic. And now eventually your cons that one consumer application can't deal with the volume and you need to horizontally scale it. You need more of it, which is the whole point of a microservice deployment, right? So you can horizontally scale it. Now you might start by looking at non-exclusive queues within Solace and a non-exclusive queue, what it does is it allows multiple consumers to connect to the same named queue and it load balances the incoming events among those consumers. And that's a great solution when the events are independent. So for things like credit card validation, you can do them in any order. You just want to load balance among the consumers and that works great. In this particular case, as you can see, you know, changes to order 
22 could go to different consumers. So if I do place an order, modify it, cancel it, they need to be processed in that order, in that sequence. And in this case, there's no guarantee that they will be because they could go to different consumers. So that doesn't really work. So enter partition queues. Partition queue, as I was saying before, is like the equivalent of a Kafka consumer group, if you're familiar with that. Only, uh, as I'm going to explain, I think we have a lot of advantages with partition queues over Kafka consumer groups. So the way that you would take advantage of this is that publishing applications would publish their events now with a key, very much like what you do with in Kafka. And the key identifies you know, the uh, unit in which sequence needs to be maintained. And so for us, this key would be an order number. So we publish the event with the order number, and that could be a new order, an update, a delete. It, and that goes into the Solace event broker. It gets routed to a particular partitioned queue because the subscription on that queue matches the event that was produced. So now it's landed at the queue. And what we do then is we run that key through a hash that is specific to that partition queue, and we put the event into a particular partition. So that all events related to order 22 end up in the exact same partition, and that's what ensures that sequence is maintained. Now, as consumer applications come up, they can all have the same configuration. They connect into the same named partition queue, and the PubSub Plus event broker then dynamically assigns partitions to consumers. Each partition will be assigned to only one and exactly one consumer, and a consumer, though, could could uh, handle events from multiple partitions if need be. So now this is all up and running and you know, you've know you been able to increase your processing capacity for your incoming orders. But you know we all have periods of peaks, right? So you have Black Friday as was just happened recently and your orders go through the roof, which is a great problem to have. And so now what you can do as you would expect in the cloud is to be able to scale in a dynamic way your consumers. So you could use something like Kata, for example, which is popular in Kubernetes that will look at the uh, load on a particular queue and dynamically scale up and scale down your number of consumers. And Solace has a Kata scaler that is available as open source in the CNCF project. And that will monitor the size of your queue, scale up your consumers or scale it down so you can dynamically adapt to load, which is a great thing. And the lots of advantages we think to this architecture and what we've developed. So first of all, you can have filtering of events in order processing and consumer scaling all together, which is not possible with Kafka consumer groups. You have intelligent, fast rebalancing. So whenever I added that bottom consumer that connected to partition four, traffic did not stop on any of the other partitions. There is no stop the world event. The flow continues for all the other partitions only the flow from partition four has been impacted and only for a very small amount of time. And that's why you can scale up and scale down your consumer processing dynamically. And it doesn't, you know, it's not traumatic to your system. And the last advantage is that the number of partitions is consumer specific. And so that means that if this application starts off with six partitions and it needs more because it needs more consumers, you could scale it up and repartition to say 10 or 12, and it only affects this consumer, no other consumers. And in, in a Kafka environment, when you repartition a topic, it affects all consumers of that topic. So this is all very localized. We're quite excited about this feature and we're gonna be rolling this out either in March or in April, one of those two releases, the R&D team is still uh, working on that, but we're quite excited to roll this out. We think this will really help from a cloud application deployment point of view. So that's it for me. And now I'm gonna turn it over back over to Chris. Okay, thank you very much, Sean. And thank you, Chris, for the demo uh, earlier. We've, as promised, covered a lot of ground during this presentation. As I mentioned up top, everyone, please do send in your questions. We've had some of them come in throughout the presentation, but now's a great time as well. If you have questions to type those in for us and we'll take them up uh, in just a moment. Before we get to those, I did want to remind everyone that we have a great user community. Uh, that is uh, close to 10,000 users strong at this point. Uh, and you can join the community for free for all the reasons you see uh, on this slide. Just go to solace.community.com and jump in. And I also wanted to say now's a great time to do so because uh, with the holidays, we have Solace's uh, holiday challenge starting December 6th. And you can join that challenge to unwrap gifts, answer skill testing questions, and win prizes like Nintendo Switch, 
uh, cool cooler or a gaming microphone. So that's my pitch to uh, join the community and join that challenge. Okay, now let's jump into uh, questions that have come in. And then as I said, keep them coming as we go. Uh, first question to you, Sean, will partition queues be a paid option? Uh, good question. The answer is no, it's not a paid option. Uh, you get that included with your broker. So as soon as you upgrade to the release that supports partition queues, you'll be able to turn a partition queue into exclusive, non-exclusive or partitioned. And uh, away you go, start building your apps. All right, thank you, Sean. Uh, next one's for you, Rob. Uh, does distributed tracing work with Splunk? Absolutely. PubSub plus distributed tracing will work with almost uh, over 50 backend observability vendors because we actually leverage the Open Telemetry standard. Open Telemetry is the second largest CNCF initiative and it's being driven by the observability vendors and it really facilitates tracing through the Open Telemetry cl collector that converts from the source vendor receiver to the observability vendor exporter that are built into the collector. And Splunk products definitely work with open telemetry. So yes, we will support Splunk. Perfect, thank you. Uh, Chris Alt, next one's for you. Uh, can you configure the cloud console to send to multiple targets, uh, like your own Datadog and Insights and my own internal systems? ELK. Yes. Uh, yeah, excellent question. Thanks for that question. And right now, the PubSub Plus console does not allow configuring to multiple targets, but that's a great use case. That's a great question. And uh, I'd like to throw that into our backlog for Q4, uh, sorry, for early 2023 planning. All right. Thanks, Chris. Uh, let's get everyone in here. Daryl, why don't you answer this one? Um, so it seems like exporting event portal spec as async API and trying to generate code basic, based on async API spec is limited to a couple of protocols right now. For example, it doesn't include AMQP. Uh, is there any plan to support AMQP on top in the future? Yeah, most of these code generators are actually developed by the community, the async API community. We at Solace contributed one for Spring Cloud Stream, uh, and it does talk uh, SMF protocol. So yeah, not AMQP. We don't currently have plans to, to build an AMQP one, but maybe someone in the community uh, will. We don't currently, but and we might change our plans over time, but at this point, we don't have a, a firm date or commitment to do that. Okay, all right, and stick with us here, Daryl, for another one on Event Portal. Uh, for discovery feature, for the discovery feature to be delivered in, uh, in early uh, in Q1 of 2023, um, a project mixing Kafka Solace and use connectors sync source. Sorry, I'm paraphrasing this a bit. Will it be possible to define and view the topics mapping Solace Kafka via the discovery slash audit feature? Yeah, so so for that one, it's interesting. For that project, actually, you'll be likely be able to leverage our new Kafka mesh capability. So that it's like basically an integrated Kafka connection connector, and not just the the separated one. So integrated into our broker, and of course, we're going to be able to model those those types of connectors and all different types of connectors in Event Portal, but not quite in Q1. Later in uh, 2023, we're going to su add support for these types of connectors. And so you'll see those flows across different meshes and including different uh, underlying technologies. All right, thanks, Daryl. Uh, I have a developer ecosystem question for Andrew. Uh, do I need to have Java developers to be able to manage code for the spring connectors? Uh, the short answer is absolutely not. Uh, you, we deliver each of the connectors as fully, fully uh, compiled, uh, ready to run code either as a standalone jar or as a container image. The only reason we sort of talk about Spring and open source and stuff like that around the framework connectors is really about uh, discussing the common architecture, but each connector itself is, is fully ready to run and you don't need to be a developer to do that. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, back to you, Rob T, for this one. Is there a way to feed a pre-populated trace or span to the open telemetry tracing of Solace uh, and create a full trace from application to application through Solace events? Or is Solace tracing, uh, does Solace tracing create and use its own traces only? 
Absolutely. Uh, you can create uh, telemetry on your application. You can create telemetry on your Solus API. You can do tracing from uh, this, the each Solus broker you pass through in the event mesh, and then tracing again at the API and or the application level um, throughout the, the, the whole path of the event. And this is all brought through integration of open telemetry with the application, with the API and with the broker and leveraging context propagation to pass that uh, information about the event and allow it to be correlated by mm -hmm. the open telemetry backend. So uh, absolutely designed to be end to end for application. Great, thanks Rob. I have a few more for you here. Um, will distributed tracing be available for on-prem brokers? Absolutely, it's uh, available today on-prem. Thanks for clarifying. Uh, does this Kafka uh, integration, um, does it work with Kafka compatible interfaces like Event Hub from Azure Managed Service? Uh, the intent is to, uh, to um, be able to run with any Kafka environment. Uh, initially, the focus is around uh, Confluent and Apache, but uh, as we've seen, just creating connectors, they just seem to just work, and we're kind of it. We're anticipating the same sort of thing. If it's not, if for some reason it doesn't work, we'd be looking to do um, uh, an adjustment to that, the release after the first release. So absolutely, you know, over the course of time, we'll go and and uh, and uh, handle the uh, interfaces from um, uh, a variety of different uh, cloud platforms. Okay, thanks, Rob. Uh, back to you, Sean, for an SAP related question. And many of you on the call may know that uh, SAP has OEM'd our event mesh solution called SAP Advanced Event Mesh. So the question is given that, Sean, will our roadmap and things like distributed tracing and other capabilities be folded into that OEM or are we aligned with what S SAP will be reselling here? Yeah, the answer is yes. Um, and as Chris explained, SAP Advanced Event Mesh is based on PubSub Plus Cloud. And so as we roll out new functionality in PubSub Plus Cloud, there's a bit of a lag as it becomes part of SAP Advanced Event Mesh. And so, for example, distributed tracing is not there yet, um, but these things would roll into uh, the SAP offering over time. Yeah, 100%. Yep. Okay, thanks, Sean. Daryl, another question for you. Um, when uh, will queue configuration be available on the event portal? Yeah, so queue configuration will initially be available. We're actually going to discover the queue configuration and audit the queue configurations initially. So that's in the Q1, end of Q1, Q2 timeframe. And then we'll actually be able to provision broker queue configurations and set those configurations in designer later on, uh, probably like. Um, you know, summertime frame, North American time. So yeah, so we'll be able to push them then, but you'll be able to audit against them uh, sooner than that with the discovery and audit capabilities. All right, Daryl, let me just stick with you here. I think we have time for just a quick few more here. Will the event portal support the client profile and ACL profile in the future? We will. So uh, when we do the configuration pushes to the broker and be able to do configuration management, uh, of the brokers for new applications, we'll actually have to support client and ACL profiles so that you know we, we allow uh, applications to send the messages that they're allowed and only those as well and as receiving them. So yeah, that's planned uh, right. you know later in 2023 as well. Okay, thanks, Daryl. Uh, back to you, Chris. Uh, for distributed tracing, um, is it that PubSub Plus sends out open telemetry and distributed trace just visualizes visualizes it, or is it that distributed tracing sends out the open telemetry? Yeah, interesting question. Thanks. Um, the PubSub Plus uh, console, sorry, the PubSub Plus platform emits um, open telemetry st uh, standard trace uh, messages, and um, the Solus receiver that's 
uh, con configured in our open telemetry collector is the unit that converts the, the events into open telemetry uh, standard messages and the exporters in the exporter pipeline are what pass the messages back to the visualization tools like Datadog, Splunk, Jaeger, et cetera. So that's, that's the flow of the mechanism. So the, 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 the visualization is handled using the standard based uh, messages coming in and whatever visualization tool that that you happen to be using. Okay, thank you very much, Chris. I think we're at a, a great point. We've gotten through uh, close to all the questions, if not all of them. I'm just uh, making sure there's no more coming in. But I want to thank everyone on the call, our presenters, and everyone who joined us today uh, for this product update featuring uh, the launch of distributed tracing. I I hope that uh, many of you have a chance to go in and uh, take that for a spin and, and find value um, in this uh, great new feature. Um, I also wanna say happy holidays and uh, please do stick around if you can to fill out a survey on uh, how valuable hopefully you found this uh, webcast to be. So with that, uh, we'll sign off.